Today I want to give you a guide on how to play Swan effectively in the co-op version of StarCraft 2. Now of course, I've recently leveled him up to the max level of 15 and this guy is extremely powerful. In particular, once you get to the later stages of the game, his army is actually probably the most powerful out of any co-op commander period. Like this guy is practically unstoppable once it maxes out. The issue however, is getting to that point. Now of course, I'm going to be explaining to you what I personally find to be most efficient. When it comes to co-op, there are obviously countless of different units that you can try out and a lot of different compositions that work very very well but I've while leveling up I've basically tried every single one that's possible and this is what I personally found to be the most efficient as well as the most powerful. So of course he's a mech based commander what that means is that we will be focusing on a ton of factory and starport units and we don't even have a barracks so we can't really even use that to begin with but we will build an army of vehicles spaceships and turrets and we will be able to control a giant laser drill with destructive energy abilities. Now it does say uh, that it's recommended for experienced players, I personally wouldn't worry too much about that. Now today we're going to be playing on one of the most powerful maps for Swan, we're going to be playing on the Rifts to Core Hall mission and I will explain exactly why it is so good for him in just a little bit, but the units that we are going to be focusing on on this map in particular as well as most of the other maps where he's viable is going to be none other than the Goliath, a heavy fire support unit that can attack both ground as well as air and secondly the science vessel an aerial support unit that can use irradiate and nano repair abilities. Now of course I did get Swan to level 15, that means that I got a ton of upgrades that make the units that I'm going to be building even more powerful, but the really nice thing about this playstyle is that it works just fine from level 1 and onwards. Now for those of you interested in my mastery point selection, I got the combat drop duration and life, the structure health, as well as the laser drill build and upgrade time by default. However, power set 2, I do switch around depending on what mission we are going to be playing on. Alrighty, so here we are on the Rifts to Core Hall mission, and of course we are on the Brutal Difficulty. Now, I did by the way disable the speech right there of the, uh, of the voice actors and all that, just so we can talk about this a little bit easier. Now before we talk about anything however, I'm not gonna give you like a super super strict build order. I don't think uh, that's really necessary to be honest and in general I don't really use anything like that myself either. I just want to give you like a general guideline on how to play this guy more effectively and on how to you know be more powerful in your early and late game uh, approaches as well. So here's one thing that's really important about Swan. This guy is really powerful in the later stages of the game. Initially, he definitely is not as strong as you would like him to be and early game It's all about building up economy and making a lot of stuff. So here's what I'm doing. Okay I'm making sure that I get myself that first depot so I can continuously uh, Produce as many of these SCVs as I possibly can But the reason why he's so good on maps like this one is because first off we need to kill uh, the rifts Obviously and the rifts are really good for us to kill. We're really powerful at doing that But on top of that we can go ahead and expand very easily and that expansion is truly important as without it, we're not going to be able to really get a whole lot done. So I'm going to go ahead here and create this new unit right here called the Blaster Billy. I always love that nickname. We're going to go ahead and double produce that with an SCV here just so we can, you know, be a little bit more effective in that regard. And I will be able to start up my gases right here in my base as well. Now early game, I'm really just going to focus on allowing my ally to do all of the defending. If I need to worry about it, I could go ahead and set up some static defense right here as well. But I know that my ally is going to be just fine. And really, I'm, I'm basically setting myself up for as quick of an expansion here as I possibly can. So I'm power building here with two workers at once to try and get all of these things done. And I'm really trying to just simply make sure that I get a ton of economy here in the earlier stages of the game. Alarak will be out in just a little bit. And I know that my ally will be all right at defending this. If I needed to, I could go ahead and create myself a blaster billy as well. But he's obviously got the photon overcharge, uh, which should be all right at the very least. <laughs> I'm gonna make the assumption it will be all right. But there we go, indeed. He does have the photon overcharge ready to go. And very shortly, my expansion will be down and I can start knocking down the other rocks as well. Now, actually, I'm a little bit out of range right there. Nothing too worrisome. We don't really need to worry too much about that other gas. But as soon as this thing is gone and it's, you know, stopped, over, it stopped killing all of the debris and all that, I'm gonna go ahead and destroy um, the, uh, the debris here. But afterwards, I will be able to start getting rid of this thing as well. So you can see, right there, I'm killing it a little bit early, but it really doesn't matter all too much as I will be able to start focusing here on my expansion and really like you need that expansion if you don't have your expansion early enough 
uh, really any map where you don't get yourself early expansions. Generally speaking, this commander is not going to be that amazing. And generally speaking, that's just going to be the ones where he's weakest on. I will be able to go straight up into a uh, armory here as well. The armory is really good as it will allow me to get more upgrades. Next up, I'm going to try and get all of my upgrades here for my Goliaths. And first and foremost, that is going to be uh, the RS class targeting system as well as the multi-lock weapon system. Now, you may have noticed already, I do indeed have my Draken laser drill ready to go. And that's the reason why I am indeed getting my upgrades so very quickly, or my armory rather, is so I can go ahead and get myself the additional, um, the additional, um, well, I can go ahead and just use my arrows bolts right here as well, but I can go ahead and use the additional upgrades here very, very shortly. So here we go, armory is just about to finish up, I will be able to start upgrading my Draken laser drill as early as I possibly want to. On top of that, I've already started double producing my factory units right here, and we will be able to take this down uh, with relative ease. I'm really using my cooldowns here in the earlier stages of the game to keep Swan alive and to sort of like carry my opponents if I need to. Now apparently I hit a bit of a supply block, which is less than ideal, but a nice thing is that I can indeed power build these things up. And with the next 100 gas, I'll go ahead and get myself the laser drill level 1. On top of that, I can throw these drones right here on my gas geysers, and these will give us additional gas income, as well as my ally additional gas income as well. So it's super nice, as I can also throw it on his, uh, just like that, and we'll be able to get quite a lot of units out. At the same time, I'm going to start pushing onwards right here towards my natural, and very, very shortly, I will be able to start the multi-lock weapon system upgrade right here as well. So notice, sort of similar to like the guide that I made on Stukov, we are focusing on a lot of early game uh, upgrades before really focusing on a whole lot else. We really want to try and see if we can get a ton of our upgrades out in the earlier stages of the game, because really, if we manage to get that, we are going to become really, really powerful. Next up, I'm going to get the regenerative bio steel, which allow my units uh, to be healed up very very quickly but really I'm just trying to get all of my upgrades here as well as my economy as early as I possibly can gas is sort of like the main limiting factor so in particular a little bit later on so I'm really trying to get these Fespian drones uh, out as early as I can and we're trying to just simply you know get a ton of economy out and therefore we'll be able to uh, produce a ton of units here as well there we go uh, we'll be able to start producing a couple more depots right here, which is all good. And I can produce a couple of those if I want to uh, with a few uh, with a few SCVs. Of course, that makes things significantly easier. And I'm going to make sure to queue up just like that. Now, very shortly, right when this upgrade finishes up, I really want to go ahead and get myself the Draken Laser Drill level 3 as well. As that does make this significantly easier. Very shortly, though, I do want to get myself the starport follow-up here as well, so I can start producing my science vessels. And that's really, like, the second most powerful upgrade in the game, I suppose. Uh, you can really get a ton of stuff out. But notice, in the earlier stages of the game, right, I don't really have a whole lot. There's not a whole lot I can make here. I need to make sure that I'm really, like... Either putting up a, start, a lot of static defense, so I can hold on just by myself, or have an ally that's capable of, at the very least in the earlier stages, uh, allow me to get, you know, that economy really rolling and allow me to get all of those upgrades. Because without it, you're just going to be in a very, very vulnerable position. So I'm getting right here my advanced optics as well as the Draken Laser uh, upgrade right here as well. And I will be able to produce more and more Goliaths here very, very shortly. I'll be able to make sure uh, to get another uh, depot here as well. We'll power, uh, get one that, or we'll power that one out as well. And then I'll get myself the starport with another one of those tech reactors as well to start producing my second most favorite unit when it comes to playing Swan, and that is going to be the Science Vessel. Now, the Goliaths, they are just basically a straight-up attack damage sort of thing. They do a lot of damage. They're really quite mobile, and you can you can make a lot of them, and they're really, they're really very powerful. By the way, I'm already done producing all of my workers here, which is nice. Uh, already, um, you know, in a very, very solid setup. And I will be able to start up my science vessels very shortly. Now, the reason why we need this much gas is that my science vessels are super gas heavy, okay? I need to make sure that I get those units out here. So we'll get the improved nano repair right here, and then I'll start double producing science vessels here as well. Now, these things are 200 gas each, but the nice thing that they do is actually repair up my damaged mech units. So... The combination of these two is super nice, as they also actually are detectors. So I can produce two Goliaths at a time right now, and I can indeed produce uh, two science vessels at once as well. And this is the point where I can indeed easily start moving out. I'll go ahead and start producing a couple more uh, of these uh, of these um, supply depots. And this is the point where I can start joining my allies. So notice, for like the first 10 minutes or so, well, 10 minutes of blizzard time that is, I am kind of just like a nuisance here. I'm not really trying to be all too effective. But at this point... I can start pushing onwards. I use my cooldowns here as effectively as I can, and I, of course, got the Concentrated Beam now available as well, which is one of the upgrades that you get at a higher level 
um, you know, whenever you upgrade your uh, your laser drill right here. So at this point is when I'm becoming really powerful. My main goal at this at this moment in time right now is to just simply max out as soon as we can. Don't really want to take any additional damage here if I don't have to, but this is where I can start adding on additional factories as well, and I can really start producing a ton, a ton of units. And if you manage to get to this point in the game, and you got all of these upgrades done already, and I will be able to get my vehicle weapon upgrades here as well, and I am actually going to go ahead and create myself a second armory so I can get to 3-3 a little bit easier. Once you get to this point in the game, life's pretty straightforward on Swan. You just simply keep on producing more and more of those units. Now, one thing you will notice in just a little bit, is that I will start running low on units, and I will be able to, by the way, get myself the bonus objective here as well. Uh, one thing that you will notice is that I'm going to start running very low on, uh, very, very low on gas. In particular, the more science vessels I make. And of course, did he already go down, actually? Oh yeah, it actually did already go down, nice. Um, the more science vessels I make, the more difficult this becomes to produce here. So one thing I can do, um, I, I can basically start focusing on some uh, Hellions and Hellbats as well. So sometimes later on into the game, I get the Infernal Preigniter as well as the Plating Upgrade. So right now I can start producing some Hellions as well and spend more and more gas on making sure that I get myself um, more and more Science Vessels. That's more of like a late game sort of thing. On top of that, I now have the level 3 upgrade, so I basically have a nuke at my disposal whenever I want it. And I will be able to mix in some Hellions and Hellbats right now. Uh, the main reason for that is that I can continue producing science vessels. And really, that's like that's like my main focus here. So, getting the science vessels out just makes the game significantly easier. Uh, in particular, when you are going up against a Zerk opponent. So basically, these units have got two different abilities right now that I like using. We got Irradiate, not too useful against Protoss versus Zerk, however. It deals biological damage. It's really very helpful as they can sort of just kill everything on their own. Of course, and by the way, not making Hellions, I'm making Hellbats. A little bit of a difference. Uh, but the main goal here is for me to just simply make a lot of, um, you know, a lot of tech units. And eventually, we're going to be able to move out just fine. On top of that, I can double start double producing. And you can see, like, I really, I'm really starting to run low on gas here, which is a little bit scary. But, like, the nice thing is, I don't really need to worry too much. All of my units will be healed up pretty much automatically by all of these science vessels. Now, there is a limit of science vessels that you want, of course. You don't really want to build, like, just a gazillion of them uh, for absolutely no reason. But the nice thing is that you can, right? You can build more of them, and it's not like your units become far weaker or whatever uh, whenever you do. Like, you, you cannot really go wrong by making too many of them, at least in my experience so far. Uh, of course, we are still prioritizing Goliaths. Goliaths are just a little bit better. Um, but, I mean, if you need more science vessels and therefore need to add on more Hellions and Hellbats and all that, that totally works. That's totally fine. So he's actually teleporting uh, my army away here very, very shortly, I think. That's probably the goal. There we go. And we'll be able to start pushing straight towards the final objective. Now, we are actually going to go over there to get the second bonus objective first uh, before doing anything else. But you can really see, like, the strength of my units right now is already super, super high. And I can get a ton more upgrades here as well, and it only becomes more powerful, right? And that's super nice about Swan. So if you manage to get past, like, the first 10 or so minutes in the same way as I just did, you're just going to be able to drop down pretty much all of these abilities and, you know, just start pushing onwards. So the maps that he is most powerful on are the ones where you need to either kill, like, Shuttles, Threshers, Rifts, those kind of things, where the Goliaths are able to shine, and you can get yourself, more importantly, a very quick second expansion. If you get yourself a quick second expansion, the game becomes infinitely easier, as you are allowed to just simply get so many units out um, very, very early on, and therefore you're gonna be just fine. Now, apparently, uh, Azura once again putting up pylons so he can photon overcharge uh, once the bonus objective arrives, which works just fine for me. Uh, but at this point, you know, it's pretty straightforward, I just keep on producing things. Now, I accidentally did make a siege tank. I speak of this of these units real quick, just to speak of it real quick. On some missions, the siege tanks are incredible, such as, for example, the ones where you just simply need to defend into a certain position, right? If you manage to defend just fine in the earlier stages of the game, um, and you get yourself the expansions out, the siege tank becomes really powerful as well. But, in general, the unit is not nearly as mobile, of course, as, you know, some of the others that are out there. And it simply means that, in many instances, you're just not going to be as effective. But if you need to, for example, hold on to... Um, we do want to wait for the bonus objective here, by the way. I'm not sure when it's going to come. But if you need to hold on to a certain objective... The Siege Tank is, like, absolutely incredible. The Siege Tank is just one of the best units that you can really produce at that point in the game. 
And right now you can already see it, right? I got my pulse cannon ready to go in just a couple of seconds. Uh, we should be able to start pushing here just fine. I'm gonna use it whenever I feel like there's a necessity for it. And you can really see like this is just stupidly, stupidly powerful. Now, on some maps, like I said, the Siege Tank may be good. There are some maps where, you know, for example, uh, your other Stargate units can be good as well. There are some maps where you maybe want to go Thors. But for the most part, as long as you base your units around this composition of Goliaths and Science Vessels, there is just not really a whole lot that you can do wrong with him. On top of that, one thing to not forget about, and we are maxed out right now, for example, one thing that you cannot forget about either is to get, you know, the Static Defense whenever you need it. Like, the early game Static Defense, the Blaster Billy as well as the Flaming Betty, and if you need to, the Spinning Dizzy, these guys are incredible as well, and they will be able to make the game significantly easier, in particular when you have to hold on to an objective. But I would focus the earlier stages of the game on getting yourself economy so you can get an army like this just a couple of minutes later, because at this point, you're just able to roll through everything, and within just a couple of minutes, really, after, you know, me establishing the economy and obviously Adarak also getting his, we're just in an extremely powerful position, and we cleaned this one up with absolute ease. So there we have it, the Rifts to Core Hall on the Brutal Difficulty. Now, like I said, this is just a guideline. So if you want to adjust this in any way, shape or form, definitely go ahead and do so. Of course, it all depends on how good your ally is as well. You could really clearly see uh, me and Azura have, uh, have played quite a lot of games together. We actually did a lot of the mutation missions on Brutal and all that. Uh, he is very capable of carrying me through the earlier part of the game. However, if you are playing with an ally who is not as strong as he is, um, just simply use some static defense and like slow down your economy by maybe a minute and a half or so. Get some turrets up, get some of the blaster billies to defend, get one of the flaming turrets, and they're gonna be able to hold on to pretty much everything just fine as well. Uh, but focus on maps. Um, in particular the ones where you are able to get like a quick easy second expansion focus on swan on those maps because if you get to destroy rifts thrashers shuttles those kind of things he will absolutely destroy things every now and then adding on static defense is great and on some maps such as for example the one where you need to defend the tower as well as the one where you have to kill all of the trains the siege tanks can be absolutely incredible as well uh, and if you need to and you are going for the double armory upgrades like i was in this particular mission adding on the hellbats is it's totally legit and it works out like an absolute charm. I mean, they're a really good unit as well. And if you get the upgrades on them, everything is A-OK. -okay. If you found this video helpful and you did enjoy it, let me know by hitting that like button down below because I would love to make more guides for either different unit compositions or for different commanders as well. So if you have a suggestion of a commander that you would like to see me cover next, let me know down below in the comment section of the video as well as just let me know if you enjoy these kind of videos because uh, they are definitely a heck, of a, lot of, uh, a heck of a lot of fun to make. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you in the next one.